Okay. So let me take you through the dashboard and all the features around it. All right. So this is how the dashboard really looks like. You see the, uh, but before we go ahead, understand this in this plunk, whatever you see as a part of dashboard or anything, it's all a part of an app. Okay. So we are currently in a specific app. That's the name of this app is basically search and reporting. Okay. So now if we need to, you know, if I just click on the Splunk enterprise, you can get to see all the apps, but I click on search and reporting. So I only see this, right? This is the default app. This you don't really have to install it. It comes by default. Okay. What do you have uh, is on the top, you have the administrator information, account setting preference and everything message wherever we have any alert re related to the appliance software that, you know, there is a storage uh, issue or, you know, um, the, the, you need to uh, create some partition in order to accommodate more logs or something. All those messages comes here. Then the setting tab. This is where you have to work with uh, quite a lot of stuff. Let's say it's a fresh setup. Mostly you would be having a live environment, but if it is a fresh setup, in that case, you have to add data, right? So let's say I click on add data. So what happened is you get a lot of possibility and there are multiple data sources. Now, what are data sources? Data sources are the endpoints, the one who, who is ready to push the data. It could be network, uh, router switches, it could be firewall, it could be your Windows Server, Ubuntu Server, or a desktop. Let's consider operating system. I click on it, and um, you know uh, I have one option uh, as an operating system currently available as a part of you know inbuilt. Uh, so once once it is done, then it asks you to choose the collection method. I go ahead and you know forward data to the Splunk. That's the only best practice we have. So there are our three steps. First, the collection method. Then we go ahead and it, it will give you a configuration and deployment method. Uh, you have three method here. Either you can make use of Splunk Cloud where all the data will be pushed to the Splunk Cloud environment or you have single instances or distributed instances. Mostly organization have distributed instances and Splunk Cloud. In case of Splunk Cloud, organization don't really have to maintain the heavy servers and the large infrastructure, distributed infrastructure, and they don't really have to manage the connectivity and everything. Uh, but with distributor, it's a responsibility of the organization itself to manage all the forwarder, all the indexer, and then actual server as well. So in our case, all the components resides in the same server. So all indexer, forwarder, dashboard is all on a single platform and it is accessible on a local server port, which is local host uh, on port 8080, right? So we just click on single instance and you see it's giving you an idea how the deployment would really looks like. So what do you need to do is on your window servers on the on here, you need to install an agent a software. That's name of the software is this Plunk Universal Forwarder. So the moment you install it, it will ask you to set the IP address and the port number of your server. Okay. So currently, um, uh, you know, whatever the IP address of my server is, I need to specify that and I'll be good to go. So once I specify that, then I can go ahead and install it in the real world environment. Currently it is my lab setup, uh, lab windows setup. So I'm using it on my, uh, you know, lab setup itself. So once I go ahead and do next, um, you know, it won't really execute unless I, you know, configure the universal forwarder. Now let's, uh, if let's say you have a firewall, maybe let's consider another environment where you have a security appliances in that case, you know, uh, maybe it's semantic or it's giving you an option of Mac cafe, uh, active directory semantic input. This is for antivirus system. You also have networking in case, uh, you want to set up same system for Palo Alto. Now this is a bit different because you can't really install any software on the firewalls, right? So again, this would be exactly the same. You can select the single instance and under the configuration setup, then you have an environment which says, 
uh, th this is where this is on the left you have the your Palo Alto appliance but you see you you can you cannot really install any you know agent on your firewalls so what you need to do is you need to set uh, by default all the firewalls or uh, any network devices have capability to push the logs to the syslog servers so this is where the Palo Alto will define the syslog server IP address to syslog server and uh, which would be a dedicated server of course and that's where it can then define install a, a Splunk universal forwarder okay so this could be a Windows or you know Linux machine but it can of course install the Splunk universal forwarder and from there we'll be pushing the logs to our Splunk all right so that's how we are going to collect and add the data into the system right so this is all about it event type data models once we have the data we can then click on it or else whatever you see on over here you will you will you can get to see you know on the top as well let me just give you an idea quickly so if I come here in the search and reporting, you again see the search, analytics, data sets, uh, reports, alerts, dashboards as well. Okay, so if you search is something which we make use of it to get the all the logs. So it starts with the index and then we specify what index module we are talking about. So accordingly it would work. So let's say currently we are, you know, but make sure you have something in your system, right? So if let's say I search this and uh, you can specify the timings, maybe 30 seconds, one minute window, five minutes or all time. And then click on search and then you should see uh, logs, you know, that would be tremendous amount of logs that would be coming across the network. And this would be the logs. Now you might wonder uh, how exactly am I getting this? Well, this you I'll, I'll share you a link and uh, you know uh, about how you can get some sample logs on your system because currently this plug is not really connected to any real world environment but I could still see some logs these are all sample logs I have got around 60 or 20 GB of a logs from an external account so I'll share you the links that you can uh, you can you know download and you, you can extract and then you can, you know, place, move those uh, logs to a specific folder. So I'll give you the detail as well. For now, just understand this is the name of that file, the name of that entire folder, which I downloaded, which has some sample logs. Now, uh, this is really helpful to understand what all I could do. I can just click on the index and I can get all the logs. On the left hand side, you see the uh, logs based on host. Uh, you can filter based on the host as well, based on source uh, machine and source type as well. So I can specify that too. Maybe let's say if you want to say source as, you know, maybe anything, maybe you just want to specify what should be your source is. So accordingly, you know, or maybe host maybe let's say i have a specific host name available so the moment you type that you get auto suggestion into the system so maybe i'm i don't really have the name at this moment but what i could actually do is uh, i can go here i can look at okay there's one host venice venus sorry <laughs> and i can uh, I can just type here and I would get all the logs for Venus and um, wonderful can you see this now this is the logs for individual system coming in from the host Venus this is the source uh, as when reg Windows registry source type as the Windows registry itself and this is the logs related to some Windows I mean semantic endpoints protection okay now what you can uh, do other than this is you can go to the analytics you can prepare the dashboard you can look at the data sets data sets are nothing but you know a set of data uh, you know uh, prepared to fulfill a specific needs so for you know um anonymized uh, anonymized uh, email logs we have as different data sets 
for local user account creations, we have a different set of data set. Let's help us to, you know, segregate the logs uh, in a specific way. I'll talk about this in the later videos as well. Uh, there is a report. So you can you have a default report type which you can make use of. You can get to download reports based on errors in past 24 hours or one day or license usage, data cubes, everything. Alerts, if you have any, if you can also create a dashboard. What do I mean by that? It's basically whatever the output you receive. Let's say I just typed something and I got the output, right? Let's say I type index. I want the logs from uh, this machine, right? Uh, the, all the logs. And whatever I got it, I can just create, uh, I can just save as a new dashboard. You can see the save as. I can probably add this in my existing dashboard or I can even create a new dashboard and you know add it over here itself. So that's how it really works. Or it can, you, I can even create a dashboard over here as well. So, you know, I can get to see the, some analytics and everything over there. All right. So I think you got all the features about how exactly it works. Uh, because it's a, you know, older log, there's no real time logs coming in. Make sure you click on all time, then only you would be able to see the result. Okay. And uh, you also have an option to create a table. Uh, you know, once you get the logs, you can assure how your log should look like. So once you click on create table, you select the right uh, source, I mean, right index, then you can select all the source type. The source type could be of anything. It could be of collect Linux machine, semantic machine, McAfee machine, endpoint, firewall, servers, windows, Linux, anything. Then you can go next and it would show you all the logs. And from there you can, uh, you know, you can choose how exactly your table should look like, okay? And that's that's how you can sort, you can filter, you can summarize everything, right? And then finally you can save it, okay? So I think you got the idea about how Splunk really looks like. In the next video probably we'll talk about the Splunk security journey and how we can make use of some interesting apps to you know uh, to make use of some test cases and use cases of course yeah thank you